Hola, good morning. Welcome to my channel, Clear Vision. My name is Simon, and all the videos here are based on my experiences as a psychotherapist. And if you want to hear about anything or you want to leave any feedback, comments, please leave some in the comment section below. This week, I want to discuss looking at um, people rebounding back to what was uh, seen as um, manipulative, controlling, dysfunctional, possibly even toxic and abusive relationships. And the reason that we normally get to in the therapy room when we really start to unpack it um, is the sex is so amazing. The sex is fucking phenomenal. But Simon, you don't understand. The sex is absolutely incredible. It's mind blowing, etc., etc. And like I say, it's, 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 I think many of us have probably been there at some point or another and have experienced this dynamic. What happened, what is happening here is very, very complex subject and there is a lot more to it than just the sex, but for the purposes of trying to understand it and pull it apart, normally what we find in these relationships is one person is dominant, uh, dominant, manipulative and uh, almost abusive and controlling. The other person, who's normally the one sitting in my room, is and broken-hearted, is normally the person who is passive, submissive, can be seen as having low self-esteem, low self-worth, is way more vulnerable and, and more indecisive. And what will happen is there's there's normally something happens, there's you know the friction starts up, the dysfunction starts up, and there's a rejection that happens, and the the person perceived as submissive or passive is often rejected or they've had enough and they've pulled themselves away and out of this said relationship and then they start to miss them and then they start to miss certain things and it's normally they go back because the sex is so absolutely freaking amazing. Now, on the surface, the the, per the strong, the, on, the, on the surface, the manipulator, the controller, the dominant side of the relationship, the dominant person in the relationship seems to be the stronger one. They seem to have it together that's actually not the case when you start to scratch the surface. And the other person in the relationship who's often sitting in front of me in the room is the one who's perceived as having low self-esteem, weak, vulnerable, etc., etc. Now, uh, to understand this, what normally happens in these relationships is the more submissive, passive, vulnerable one gives their power to the other one. And the other one is, off, is often unconsciously demanding it or kind of manipulating the situation to take control. So they give this power over. So here, have my power, you're amazing, you've got all of the answers, you're controlling, you're manipulating, you're dictating where this relationship's going, what we're doing in our lives, you know, and I'm giving way to that. So therefore you are powerful. So you've already got them up on a pedestal. So therefore anything they do is gonna be pretty amazing, including anything negative is going to be amazingly negative. So when it comes to sex, you're going to give them the honor of making, it's, it's them who's making the, uh, relation, the sex in the relationship absolutely phenomenal. And I've also heard this within um, less kind of intense side of relationships as well, or people looking wistfully back on ex-partners. Ex what one has to realize is that sex is phenomenal because you make it phenomenal in here. It takes imagination to make it phenomenal. It takes somebody to be able to be vulnerable to make sex phenomenal. It takes somebody to be able to be attuned with themselves to make sex amazing and be able to attune to the other as well, emotionally, psychologically, physically attuned to yourself and to the other. It takes the ability to be in the present moment, to switch off, to be selfish yet giving. All of these things within sex and the act of sex itself, the intimacy that can be gained from sex itself, all of these things occur within the individual in order, and that's what makes the sex so phenomenal. If this is the case, then that doesn't kind of, then surely that doesn't make sense with someone who's passive, submissive, has low self-esteem, etc., etc. And the answer there is well, actually not quite, because if you flip it on its head, if you really unpack it, someone who is vulnerable, sensitive, emotional, submissive, passive, generally has the ability to be in the present moment. Generally has the ability to be. Um, emotional, generally has the ability to attune to themselves and to the environment. It's a very good reason why, and I'll get to it in a minute. So hold on to that. And 
they are also generally have the ability to love genuinely and give genuinely and be intimately intimate genuinely and authentically it's their behaviors are often perceived as oh they've got low self-esteem or they've got lack of self-worth etc etc but actually they also have all of these other things within them this massive connection to this massive ability to be attuned to somebody else and attuned to themselves and have this imagination uh, which you need in order to make sex phenomenal and fantastic and so damn amazing now the other person in a relationship is often perceived and can be seen as being manipulative controlling dominating possibly even toxic or abusive and, and that then gives the impression that they are very very strong and very self-assured and know what they're doing when you scratch the surface of those kind of dynamics and that super controlling, manipulative, coercive behavior, what is actually going on is they are living, they're not living in the present. And in order to have mind blowing sex, you need to be able to be in the present. They are living in the future. They're also living in the past, quite possibly. So they're living in the past, basing everything they're experiencing right now on some kind of past trauma in which they had no control. And they are living in the future because they are trying to do damage prevention. They are trying to prevent something very, very bad happen, happening. And that normally is the other person leaving. And the more they try to stop this person from leaving, and leaving they do this by getting them to love them. They get do this by uh, this kind of push-pull dynamic because that keeps us fighting and they do this then by being by by being vulnerable and then by being abusive and then by being vulnerable and by being abusive what they're trying to do is they're trying to prevent future hurt from happening now if you if they reject you and you actually go or you of your own own accord leave because you go ah enough's enough I've had enough of this this is crazy they will then switch on everything they can. They will pull every stop out to try to get you to come back. And one of those will be, obviously, lots of sex. Now, lots of sex does not equal fantastic mind-blowing sex. That's just the availability of sex. The fantastic mind-blowing sex comes from within the individual. So now we go back to, okay, so what is it about so if you have this one individual who's vulnerable able to be in the moment able to attune etc etc why does this make the why does this help when they go back make the sex so amazing well it's because there's a wound there also so if you're wondering then this is this is how you kind of break free of these cycles one way to break free and perhaps a more healthier way to break free of this kind of cycle of bouncing back because the sex is so phenomenal because there's other stuff going on if you and and this maybe do this before there comes this point of this kind of complete crash where you are completely rejected um, and left out in the cold or they disappear off with somebody else every time you go back the sex is phenomenal because a wound is healing because there's a rejection someone's pushed you away or you've pulled yourself away and now that hurt is suddenly healed so it's going to for someone who's vulnerable who is has the ability to be vulnerable more emotional, more attuned to themselves, more attuned to the environment around them, they're going to find that a whole lot more intense. Now chances are the other person is just going, yeah, the sex was pretty good, but last night, but, and then for the other person, they're like, oh, it's phenomenal, it's absolutely phenomenal, oh my God. And then the other person, if they're manipulative enough and coercive enough, will also play along with that. And then we'll give you some more because they realize that's the carrot on the stick. They realize they've got you on the hook and they're just going to pull you back in. And then they solve, their issue, which chances are might be, and again, this is there, this is for the purposes of understanding this dynamic. It might not always be this because relationships are complex, and every ind every individual relationship has its own individuality and its own own origins and history, etc., etc. But chances are, then they're saving themselves for future hurt. Right? If I coerce them back in, if I play with this carrot, if I pull them back in, if I tell them, yes, it was fantastic and amazing, and I'll give you some more now. I'm going to prevent this future hurt and this is all on a uh, mainly on an unconscious level to look around this to work this one out first of all one has to realize one's power and this goes for any relationship even if it's healthy 
if you give your power over to someone else, you are denying yourself your own value and you're denying yourself your own power. If you find sex amazing in, in your relationship that you're in, whether or not your relationship is functional or dysfunctional, if you find sex amazing, it's because you're making it amazing. It's because it's in your imagination. It's because it's your, but now it doesn't detract away from the quality of it. It's your ability to be in the present moment. It's your ability to attune to yourself. It's your ability to attune to somebody else. It's your ability to give yourself over, be intimate, pleasure somebody, you play, they play, have them pleasure you. All of those things combine together to make the sex mind-blowing. Whether or not the relationship is healthy is another thing. If you find yourself in this dynamic and you keep going, yeah, but I'm going back because the sex is amazing, you're denying yourself any kind of power, any re responsibility, you are not acknowledging that. That's where the key is, that's where the clues are. Why might this be? Why might I be experiencing this massive elation when I come back and this phenomenal sex? First of all, acknowledge that it's your something to do with that, it's in your head. Second of all, acknowledge what led you to be, what's happened in your life that has led you to be passive, that has led you to tolerate a, um, uh, 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 a kind of a flish flash relationship an on off on off on off controlling manipulative relationship what has led you to this point where you accept that where you f what are you trying to fix from back there in the present moment in this is this dynamic familiar to you are you used to these kind of relationships was this the relationship you had with your parents with other, with previous loved ones? Is this a family dynamic that you are completely used to where there's this kind of push, pull, control, manipulate? Oh, it's phenomenal. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, it's phenomenal. Oh, no, it's not. Etc. Etc. Uh, because that will tell you where you're coming from in, in your history. And generally, people who, uh, I'm getting to my point in a minute, generally, people who are more attuned to the environment and more attuned to themselves are so for one of two reasons. And normally the big reason is quite negative and that's because they come from some, if they find themselves in a current abusive relationship and that's something familiar, they come from that. And if you come from that kind of environment, you learn, uh, you learn uh, uh, to be attuned to the other person. You're looking for all of those non-verbal cues of how somebody is emotionally, where they're feeling, what they're going to do. You're more attuned to yourself. You're more in the present moment. You will also probably live in the future quite a bit as well. And you will be very, very anxious. And all of these things occur um, I, I often come up in the room. We see all, I, you know, when I'm working with clients I see, who are experiencing this, we see these dynamics, I see these dynamics, they explore these dynamics. So it, often it comes from previous wounds. This is what you learned, this is how you became, came to be. And then you find yourself in perhaps repeated adult relationships where the sex is phenomenal, but the actual relationship is quite dysfunctional and it's quite on off, push, pull, abusive, coercive, manipulative, and you're on the end of it, bouncing backwards and forwards. And every time you go back into it, you're giving them, you give them your power. You say, it's phenomenal, it's amazing. And I've heard this also used outside of sex. Oh, they're amazing, they're wonderful. And then when we kind of look at, well, what is that? What does that look like? And then often it's like, there are two very, very different descriptions. There's this one kind of romanticized up on a pedestal description the same goes with the sex, it's, freaking, it's fantastic, it's phenomenal, it's this, it's that. And then the reality is, well, actually, what is that? What, what's going on in a relationship that makes it like this? Well, you know, because I hear all of these negative stories. Um, and the same with the sex, well, what is it about, what is it that they do that does, and often that's when people start to, oh, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And the reason they don't know is because it's in there. Sex is in the mind, sex is in the heart, sex is in the soul. And it starts with you, and it's the same with relation, uh, and it's the same with a, a, a good relationship. A re the good relationship starts with a good relationship with you, as cliche as that is. It starts in here, it starts in here, and it starts in the soul. If you can have a good relationship with yourself, you can have a good relationship with somebody else. If you are living in constant fear, if you're running on fear, if you're running on adrenaline, if you're running on anxiety, you are going to find this bang, pew, bang, pew, high, low, high, low. You're going to be in that. And you're going to keep giving power over and you're going to keep saying, yes, but it's absolutely phenomenal. And they describe something that's pretty shit, actually. 
And then, yeah, but it's absolutely mind blowing. And But actually the reality is it's pretty shit. The dynamics aren't so great. So I'm gonna end it there because it does, does get very complex. But if you really, really want to break free of it, walk away from it and actually start exploring your own wounds, how you give your power away emotionally, physically, psychologically, and why you do that. The why is often not as important as recognizing that you do do it and then making that conscious effort to not do it and then start working on yourself and then you go backwards. The why is always the center point. What happened to you? What happened to you? And then from there you can explore what you're doing in the present and what you're trying to prevent from happening in the future and what you're trying to recover from that happened in the past. I hope that helped. I hope it made some sense. It is very complex. Relationships are very complex. We're very complex. But if it shone a little bit of light on it for you, then uh, and it, it, it's a good thing. Okay, until uh, next time, please take care of yourselves. Adios.